Go ahead, Zoe. I mean, I think the biggest thing is for you know us media who <clears> wanted <throat> to know how it it all went down in in the beginning when you guys decided to to leave what length of period of time was that just was there sort of one meeting where it all happened was it over a few days where you all just realized you know we're Did not going to be able to gel yeah. Yeah. yeah no it really we went we weren't axed I mean it really got down to we were all retained as a team mm -hmm. and we started to work uh, you know late December early January mm -hmm. and then as we were trying to finalize contracts if you will that really became the uh, catalyst then to say well we're not sure for them to say we're not sure we want all these Democrats and well this is our team you're not breaking us up and so there was a, uh, quite a few conversations and it finally came down to uh, a call that uh, I had uh, with Terry Reid and we both agreed to disagree and we went on our happy way. Was there also a disagreement over the bonus if you won? No. No? No. I mean there was money issues. Uh, they thought that some of the consultants uh, might have been uh, higher scale mm -hmm. than Republicans which I found uh, kind of curious and I mm -hmm. wondered why Republicans are discounting and not charging big uh, fees and not that Democrats do but uh, it never really came down to bonus. Well, when you hung up the phone for Ms. Reed, what was your first thought? You dodged a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> well, disappointed because you always like a challenge, uh, and this would have been a good challenge. So there was some disappointment and then some relief. I knew then for the next four months I'd be able to spend more time with my three year old son and, uh, you know, do that instead of being in the war room. So. Did you follow the campaign? Yeah, I did. I followed the campaign throughout and how many uh, cringeworthy moments were there for you? Cringeworthy? Yes. For watching, watching the campaign? It. When you would say, oh, I wouldn't have done that. Yeah, scratch your head. Uh, there were a few, uh, especially when they came out uh, and launched the campaign. Again, the cardinal rule is when you're introducing or doing your campaign launch, make sure you define yourself. What was the first ad, or the first launch? What did it say? Uh, the first launch was all about Safe Roads Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, let, let's remember Terry Lynn Land. Her first commercial was a coffee cup that, you know, she had a great narrative. She was a business person. And she's coming out with a coffee cup. You know, this is, you know, you had, uh, you know, the issues. You knew that you could win this. <coughs> and they just, for whatever reason, uh, decided to change strategy and focus on roads. So your first commercial, a 30-second spot, what does it look like? It might have been a 60-second spot, a 30 to 60-second spot, something very similar that we did in PPT. It explained uh, what the problem is, how we got here, uh, why the r we don't have the funding. Uh, so really explaining the problem. Uh, the proposal and not ask people to vote yes or no but ask them to get more information uh, to visit the website it, it, engaging them into the campaign and engaging them into a thought process uh, to get them to yes because in, in ballot initiatives you know you have your yes votes your no votes and your undecideds mm -hmm. no votes never go to yes yeah. no go no votes go to undecided same thing with yes yes okay. votes go to undecided and michigan voters are smart they get this they got ppt even though no one really knew what ppt was well then they didn't get it they didn't understand the proposal. <laughs> well, we you hunchwoggled them. <laughs> we Mr. we, we properly uh, avoided telling them. them what it was and focused on the money for local governments, and that's what passed it. We put it in simple terms so that we took a complicated issue mm -hmm. and made it less confusing. Did you tell the voters that the businesses would get a tax break as a result of this? Absolutely, that was one of the benefits, making Michigan more competitive. And we had local champions talking about the proposal in every community. We had local people. That was something that we wanted to do uh, with roads: is keep this local and not let it be about Lansing. You and actually you wanted to do an anti-Lansing message, correct? It, absolutely. What would it say? Well, it would have said that you know this helps lock the money into uh, you know the, con the Constitution helps lock the mo locks the money in so that Lansing politicians can't use it for their special pet projects. 
Say I mean, folks, that was important. Say just did do that to some extent. They said, you know, you can't trust legislators. That they had that line in there. Um, it was pretty not in the late, commercials, though. maybe, but yeah. So a lot of these things you're talking about did come up <coughs> seemingly late in the campaign, right? They had the 60-second spot that explained the proposal in a little more depth. They had Carl Levin, a you know well-respected Democrat, come out right, on, a, right. on an extended commercial. I mean, you think that? Do you think that was? Um, I don't know, too maybe. Little, too late. <laughs> well, it was out of or sequence. A scramble? It yeah, was a out scramble. of sequence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you needed to have Carl Levin in that 60 second spot <clears throat> up front mm. explaining this when there, people are looking for information, one, when there are the greatest number of undecideds, right. and most importantly, <clears throat> excuse me, before. The opposition well, can get in and there and start to what framing you're saying, this. The, the, the farmer, a farmer association, <coughs> did come out for it, but last week. <coughs> right, and you know, putting a press release out is a lot different yeah. than putting a press release out and having your organization get in the mm -hmm. on the ground level mm -hmm. and start talking about this mm -hmm. on in the community on local TV, right. radio, and things like that. Well, let's be honest. There's a lot of pressure on unions, the MEA, MEA and other unions, to really get behind this, to bankroll it, to do their own campaigns. Wasn't there a bit of a, a, an issue there because you have a governor's office who's not terribly sympathetic to their main issues and they didn't <coughs> want to put up the money. So it really was going to fall to the campaign. Right, uh, the MEA, I think you're absolutely right, don't, uh, they don't have the best relationship with this governor. Uh, obviously, this was about schools, uh, you know, extra funding, so they were brought to the table that way. Uh, but in terms of the campaign, they really didn't put any money in at all until the end, and that was the National Education Association who put in, uh, you know, uh, 50 to 100 or something like that. But the governor like sat down with Ms. Swift from the AFL-CIO at her request, and they had to come to Jesus' meeting, didn't they? That I don't know about, but I don't think the AFL-CIO, uh, they did. The UAW didn't endorse this. There were a lot of unions well, The UAW stayed not. neutral. Right. And people in town said, that's a victory. Can you explain that to me, why the UAW wouldn't get in this thing if, quote, creation of jobs was at uh, stake? Yeah, that's a good question. Why uh, didn't the Michigan Chamber? Same reason. Yeah, well, and, uh, you know, yeah. to your point, you know, one of the other things that they could have done a lot better is the politics of this. Uh, y when this legislation was passed, you know, you need to have put together a coalition. You get your politics right. So you need your friends on your side. And right out of the blocks, the, uh, the business community was split. Mm -hmm. You had the NFIB against this. You had the Michigan Chamber, who was going to go against this, and then well, they got the them Detroit to... Well, the Detroit Chamber, which took a little time to endorse something, which usually anything Snyder says, it's, you know, okay. And but the, wait a minute, the, the Chamber was going to do what? I think uh, the Chamber was going to initially oppose, and then they got it uh, to a point where they just stay neutral. Okay. And, uh, you know the Michigan Chamber uh, and, and a ballot initiative like this was missed. Uh, their organization and <coughs> you know, Rick Studley is a good spokesperson. Uh, that was missed. So you have to get your politics right in your own backyard. Think about our uh, the Michigan Republican Party chair. She was against Sat it. Sat right in that chair and said no. I feel it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but when did you have to get those uh, politics right? In those closed door meetings when that deal was being negotiated? I mean, basically they came out of that uh, out of that meeting with a deal and whatever campaign had to had to <coughs> accept what they gave them, right? Well, I think that's part of it, but you know, you know, n none of this is a, you know, uh, this is a movie. I mean, it, it plays out, right? It's not just uh, one act in a play, if you will. Static. And so, you know, the politics, you don't get it right uh, while you're doing the legislation. You got to start working and on it and getting the politics right for the campaign. So who was, whose job was it to do that? The get the politics right. Mm -hmm. Governor's political people uh, were responsible for getting the politics right. Would you say they're not really having the best week between Proposal 1 and the uh, botched uh, Rick Snyder for President campaign? I think that would be, uh, yes. They're not having a very good week at all. And um, Are they, You didn't want to run with that too much, huh? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you didn't think he was running for President, did I you? Didn't. I didn't. Uh, you know, I talked to some Republican friends and uh, some Republican funders, and they didn't think he was running. And, you know, y y there's proof points that, you know, if you're putting a campaign together, you have to do certain things, uh, especially this late in the game in a presidential race. And part of that is, well, where's your national campaign uh, team? And so he didn't have one. And so that's a proof point. Uh, Did the media get sucked in by this story? 
Uh, seduced. I don't think you got sucked in. Seduced? You got seduced in. It might have been a quieter news uh, uh, period, and so it was perfect for uh, you guys to f run with it. You gave him credit for uh, playing us like a Stradivarius. <laughs> he did it, didn't he? Well, I, you know, I don't know that. I, I don't know his motives that he played you like a Stradivarius. And, you know, if he continues his national travel to uh, promote Michigan, which he should, uh, that's good. Who's your candidate for president? Uh, right now, um, Hillary Clinton. What do you mean, right, right now? now? Well, you're going to wait till you read her emails to re <laughs> reassess? <laughs> right now, next week, next month, it's Hillary Clinton. Does she have the nomination on lock? It uh, looks that way. You don't want to take anything for granted when you're running for anything, but it clearly looks like she has the wind uh, to her back. She's got a national organization. She's got uh, <coughs> national fundraising. She's got a great narrative. You know, former first lady, former uh, U.S. senator, former secretary of state. And those are all the reasons that Republicans say don't vote for her. Well, you know, they have their say, and, you know, and she'll have her say, and We'll see in November of 2016. And the 47 Republicans who are running will all get uh, to him. Yeah, of that. all those 47, <laughs> who, would you, who would you love to run against? Who would I love to run against? I'll tell you who I wouldn't want to run against right now, and that's uh, Mar uh, Rubio. I think Rubio is a real game changer for the Republican Party. Uh, he brings in a brand new, fresh look, new demographics, uh, demographics that the Republicans have basically uh, through their voting records and through their uh, positions on immigration policy have really alienated. And so he's a real game changer, and I don't think he's going to go away. Um, but you think he can get it? I think it's an uphill you battle would, you for would, him. You think he would do better than a Jeb Bush? I think in a general election, he might be part of the ticket to excite uh, hmm. that base. I think. In Jeb all Florida ticket? Perhaps? I was going to say, that's a lot yeah, of Florida. Yeah, in all Florida ticket. Well, half of Michigan's in Florida anyway. <laughs> you know, what kind of turnout do we see if it's a Clinton Bush election? <laughs> well, you know, I think Such Democrats are going question. to. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think Democrats are going to be energized. I think uh, you saw the increased turnout with uh, Barack Obama. He was a, a, a candidate, an agent of change. Uh, a first African American, I think you're going to see that increased enthusiasm with Democrats, the base, women, first woman president. So I think you'll see, and this depends on how they both run the campaign, What's but I think you'll see increased turnout so and a lot of enthusiasm. The Bush election would be about change. <laughs> how, how, can Republicans finally, how can Republicans finally win Michigan? Well, you know, it, it's a tough one because it is a uh, Democratic state and there are more Democrats than Republicans. And the only reason they control the legislature is they've controlled the legislative process during redistricting. Uh, so uh, That's not true, though. I mean, as statewide, we have all Republican office holders. Well, that's what I mean. No. The governor is elected statewide, so is Secretary of State and AG. That's not a function of redistricting. Of those being, you know, during off-year elections plus. Well, and I think there are other factors too. Uh, who did they run against uh, is an important part. I What's mean, the biggest mistake Mr. Schauer made? You know, I, I got to say he ran a good campaign. When you think about uh, when he got in, no one else wanted to run. Right, and so Mark. Not even sure he at first was. <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't. Thought, he thought about. It. Yeah, he got within four. Do you think, uh, Dem, you know, a, a higher profile Dem candidate could have, could have uh, pulled it out? I, you know, that's high. Who would have that candidate be? I it think is. he ran the best campaign he could in that time, and no one. I mean, when you thought about, or you know, early in the election. Everyone thought Steiner was going to blow him out, right? Sure. No mm -hmm. one gave him a chance. He brought it in, and. It was close, mm -hmm. closer than anybody thought. So I give him a lot of credit for running a tough campaign, and uh, he raised enough money. And the part of the criticism was too much beating up on the governor, and not about about me and why I'm better. Yeah, so I think that's, you agree with that that's analysis? fair criticism. Absolutely. I mean, you, you uh, when you are running for governor, you know, you can prosecute a no vote. You can get people to get to know, but at some point, you have to say what you're for. And I think they were in a quandary. If you told them what they were, what he was for, and got into detail, that would change the dynamic of the debate. Then the Snyder folks would attack him on the details of any of the specifics. He could have said, "I support a gas tax increase." He could have. 
because they couldn't he attack supported, it. He supported the personal property tax uh, ballot measure, came out and said that. So what are you going to run for? What am I going to run yeah. for? Uh, just to be the best dad I can. There you go, man. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You got one more? If Hillary Clinton is president, is Jennifer Granholm going in the cabinet? I think she'll play a prominent role uh, in a Hillary Clinton administration. She's working for the campaign uh, or the independent committee. She's raising money. So I think she'll play a prominent role. Hmm. Chief of Staff. The governor be Chief of Staff? I, I don't think so, but okay. I think there are other things that she would want. Right. It's good to see you. Thanks. Good to see you. All right, thanks, guys.